Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, an emergency beer talk. <laughs> uh, what what day are we on? It's a th it's a Wednesday. It's Ooh, Wednesday, Wednesday, yes. For some reason, every day's beer talk day. Uh, oh, that's for sure. That's why we have the Discord. Uh, there's a link in chat if you want to come join the Discord, and uh, uh, so if you want to be the first to know everything, because uh, you had a little head start if you were there. Yes, and I mean, uh, get some shilling out of the way. Uh, click the link to go to Skinny Play. Uh, use the promo code to get ten percent off, even off a single item. I'll paste the Discord link once again. Uh, if you want a guaranteed answer to your question and or topic, uh, a super chat goes a long way and guarantees you an answer. Uh, we're also on Twitch for if you prefer Twitch and hate YouTube for whatever reason. <laughs> and, uh, that's about it. Uh, so, uh, how's your day been, Steve? It's been brilliant. I've been looking forward to this for months. And uh, it's great to be able to finally talk about this beer sound theatre. So... Uh, God, it was Thank annoying you. to keep quiet about this. Oh, yes. Yeah. By, uh, by the way, uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't yet already. Oh, yeah. Also to Steve, so yeah. your, your links and Thank you. st yeah. stuff are down below. <laughs> but yeah, it's all the more frustrating keeping quiet about it when B&O themselves have been leaking and photos and information and uh, yeah. But that's their right, I suppose, as the, the maker of the product. So they're allowed to put teasers out there and we did our bit. We kept everything quiet. We didn't release any information. Yeah, so don't look at us, B and O, if you ever think anything leaked through us. <laughs> no, that's You're not leaking as a sieve. <laughs> but uh, so, so yeah, the the elephant in the room is the new uh, beer sound theatre. Uh, it makes perfect sense now why they went with the moniker theatre or and or beer sound. Yes. Yeah. I mean, beer system possibly would have been viable but i think they wanted to break away from that follow on from beer sound stage as a sound bar and then music system as well because obviously as a mozart speaker it can be a standalone audio player yeah well it it actually can i mean uh, as as B &O shows uh, there's actually a touchpad on on top to do uh, a bunch of things with with my buttons which is uh, yeah. sort of like a giant level if you will uh, I don't envision anybody using this as a standalone product, but I guess you can. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the next video I'm going to do will cover plugging in any audio system back to the 1960s and, yeah, using it with or without a TV as your music speaker. God, that's one. Uh, I have the spec sheet uh, uh, somewhere. We'll go over that in a mo. but uh, yeah. 800 watts of power. Uh, I think yes. that took us all a bit by surprise. Yeah, so that's sort of almost one and a bit BLAB 28s. Yeah, but I don't think people realize that the peak power output for 28s is rarely ever used, even in wide. Yeah. Because a bit of it is constantly used for room correction and that sort of thing. Yes. So, uh, although you basically get, uh, how much is it, like 600-ish watts, you never really use the full amount of it. And if you look at the spec sheets for uh, the Beer Sound Theater, uh, it's at, at, as they measure it at one meter away, it's literally one dB less capable base wise than a set of 28s is. Yeah. Which is crazy for a center. Oh, yes. Yeah. But that's the thing it's not just a center, it's the full Atmos one point sort of um, sound, sound system on its own. But then you can add up from there if you want. So it is subwoofer, front, center, center heights, and center wides, all in one. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, uh, sideways firing, up firing, uh, beam yeah. control, uh, I mean, what else do you want out of a center? I mean, if you go by their press release, I think their idea is basically if you have a set of 28s and you want this, put your 28s as rears and call it a day. Yeah. Yeah. Is... Although I did get some criticism for that on the YouTube video because I did, I, I suggested that as an option and somebody says, what, well, you, you're just going to walk into a shop, buy this, buy 28s. But actually, this is, it's going to give you the performance of a much larger and more expensive 
home cinema system. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's not Sonos money, but for the money you're spending, you're getting a long-term, high-quality sound. Yeah. Well, Isaac coming in hot with the super chat. Uh, thank you, Isaac. Uh, what are your thoughts about the theater's capability with other Mozart platform speakers for use as surround via WISA or some uh, proprietary method? Right. Uh, I don't... The press release doesn't mention it. They're somewhat tight-lipped. It would be over network, not over WISA, because like a balance and a level don't have uh, WISA antennas in there. And if they are, then they're hidden in the spec sheets uh, and not tested uh, on the FCC website for, uh, which would make it not be legal in the US, <laughs> mm. which is a, obviously a problem. Uh, we would have fished that out in the FCC documents. Uh, but if that network connection is possible, and I think they're trying to figure it out, that that should be uh, a thing they could do. However, yes. you know how people are with tech and promises. I think they finally learned not to promise something and then maybe a year later, uh, because everybody gets annoyed in the meantime. So mm. this is me saying it, not be a no saying any of that. Yeah. Uh, I think they should, and I think that oh, they yeah. should pursue this full on because yeah. a, a, a stereo pair of balances as rear speakers to this would be amazing. Yeah, and I, I mean, my my assumption, I've spoken to a few people in b who've said that they, they want to see Mozart speakers capable of running as rear surrounds. Um, but yeah, there'll probably be some upgrades needed, whether it's firmware or software, we don't know yet. However, from day one, you should be able to do multi-room with this. Oh, so that's, can, oh that's a given, yeah. That's a given, yeah. So you'll be able to share to and fro with ASE and Mozart speakers. Because they've already worked that out with uh, balances, levels, 28s. Because I can get, walk to my M3 in the bathroom or in the office, uh, which is an ASEA product, and mm -hmm. uh, just join the BO radio from the 28s. Yeah. Which is incredible because i never set it up mm. uh it's just uh, it sniffed it out on the network I, I i just like my latest m3 i just plug it in it has line in for the most time because yeah. it's connected to a computer the radio was playing here i just pressed tap to join and it did it automatically i never set anything mm. up no and that's brilliant that's just the sort of multi-room that bno should be doing when you think where they've come from so so uh, DJ Neo says that would be cool, but zero latency network audio stream is probably difficult. Yes, but if you can Cable. delay the, the, the video coming through the, uh, the theater, mm. why not? I mean, it, it may be a bit different if you go from the TV into the theater versus into the theater up to the TV. Yeah, there might also be issues in terms of HD content protection. So I don't know whether you'll be able to forward a TV audio stream out on multi-room. So I'd, I'd suggest don't expect that yet, but certainly sharing your streaming music, that's not a problem. I can join my stage to my harmony when it's playing TV. Okay. So that that's a possibility then. Yeah. So this is why I think, and I've been, I think we've been saying this for a while, they should. And yeah. To my understanding is, uh, do I put it? They're not just exploring, they're trying to make this work, but you can't promise something that doesn't work yet, even if no, it's in beta. No. <laughs> yeah. And who knows, they may run into something like HTCP protection or something. Yeah, that's and what then, I'm thinking. Then you don't want to launch something <laughs> when you say, yeah, oops, sorry, that no longer works <laughs> with our promises. But yeah, looking in the chat, um, Sandeep and Max Age have been asking about connectivity into it. And what it's got is a USB-C connection, but it's not a regular USB. What it's doing is it's acting just as a data interface. b and have got a little adapter, um, which will convert that to stereo analog audio in. So for Sandeep's setup with, a, I think, a Lin streamer, you'd use your uh, DAC that's already on there, convert to analog, and then we'd go in as an analog signal. Uh, Max was asking about USB into the 90s. What you do effectively is run your 90s from 
um, the theatre on Powerlink. Um, you can then directly USB a digital signal into the 90s if you want, or use a DAC and bring it in analogue into the theatre, or even get it networked. And then once it's in your BNO network, you can pass it to and fro with no problem. So everything's possible, it's just a case of deciding how best to do it, depending on your specifics. Uh, Peter, yes, could I use like... BLAB 18s and 90s as front, left and right and sub with yes. this? Is it possible to play music yes. as stereo only? Yes, also yes. Yeah, and in fact, I've got some info from Jeff Martin as well that might be of interest. What they've done, not only does it work with older speakers, but they've actually gone back and taken every model of BioLab speaker back to the Pentas from 1986, and they've run it through magnitude and phase response testing. So they've had a proper, they've done proper in-room testing on every single model of BioLab speaker, and they've then mapped it into the theatre. So when you tell the theatre you've got BioLab 2500s or BioLab 18s connected, it knows the exact performance of that speaker, volume capability, how it affects phase at the crossover points, bass capability, and it gives, this is another level of bass management that we've never seen before from BNO. So it, with V1, they use their uh, advanced sound engine and brought everything forward, the tech. This has jumped on again. So now you can share your bass across all speakers, but it manages it according to the capability of the speaker. It doesn't just give every speaker bass. Yeah. So it's a proper detailed, it will give BLAB 3s bass in the amount they can take, down to the frequency they can take. Anything deeper, it will share down to the bigger speakers. It's so much cleverer, so much smarter. Also, so, uh, yeah. partially why this is called theater, I don't know if people yeah. read the spec sheet yet, but you get eight power link outputs. Eight. Yeah. I yeah. And you well, can get another eight one. speakers on WISA. Yeah. I think it's four physical um, connections. Because I had a look on the back and I could just see the four sockets. So I think it's power. They've, they've actually made a mistake on the spec sheet. It's power link outputs for eight speakers on four sockets. So I'm just waiting to confirm that. But either way, there are loads of wired and wireless connections. I thought it was a double line of four. Could be, but I'll double check. Because that. I spoke to somebody and he was quite adamant that it was uh, eight power link outputs. Right, I mean, Billy's asking eight daisy chain. Yes, it could be. Let's, let me just find the photo. Bear with me a second. Because in the spec sheet, it clearly says eight power link outputs. Yes. Yeah, because you can I... connect, because it, again, it says you can connect up to a total of 16 speakers wired and another mm. eight wireless. Yeah, I can't Which quite is... see from the angle I've got. Um, shall I send you the picture I've got? Uh, sure. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, but yeah, this, certainly... Another scenario, is it, uh, if we watch regular, the, is it possible only play through the theater? And if you watch a movie with no kids at home to possibly change full speaker lab 18 surround? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You, oh, you yeah. can set... I think you have a limit of like 10, maybe eight uh, uh, listening positions and or setups. So uh, in my harmony, where's my remote? Uh, I have uh, a setting for the TV only. I have a setting for the 50s only. I have a setting for the mm. 50s and 17s. I have a setting for the 28s by themselves. Uh, I have a setting for the TV and the 17s by themselves. I have a setting for 5.0.2, and I have a setting for 7.0.2. Uh, and you, you can change between that, and you can set what your default is, or, and what uh, sound uh, signature you want with that, if you want it to be drama, or mu music, or night listening. Yeah. Uh, the, the world's your oyster in that sense. You, you can tune that to your heart's desire. Yeah, so, so it really is good. It's uh, in terms of connectivity. Yeah, we know that you can you can connect wirelessly to any of the wiser speakers. Power links, there will be more than enough. Yeah, and, so, uh, uh, yeah. because of press release, I, I'm 99% certain that it's eight power link sockets. Yes. And I think yeah. it's double stacked like it used to be. Yeah. 
Uh, it does Atmos, finally. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> and uh, not just Atmos on Dolby Digital Plus, but also on Dolby Digital True HD, which is the fully yeah. uncompressed uh, variety. Yeah, but it's what everyone's been asking for. It's been it's been needed all along. So yeah. So uh, it's like here you have it in gold because gold is a. It actually looks one of the better products in gold to me. Yeah. Because most places, gold is sort of like, I don't know, even on 28s, I kind of don't like mm. it, but it kind of looks uh, nice on me. Yeah. Yeah, it works, doesn't it? Probably not with the wood, but with the uh, the fabric. Yeah, yes. as shown, looks nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, like Michael Schmidt says, uh, it's not just a soundbar, it's an AV preamp. Anything right. B&O does, basically ever, bar the stage, has been an AV preamp plus speakers. <laughs> yes. I mean, uh, even the stage has got basic capabilities with an audio input and uh, volume controls and, uh, and basic streaming. But yeah, this but is taking any BioVision has a built-in AV preamp uh, with uh, a bunch of audio controls, even as far back as a, a BV-10. So, uh, I mean, that, it's one of the, the least understood things. And I, in my mind, probably the, the thing in marketing that hurts them the most that nobody ever explains on their side what a BioVision is or mm. what it does. Because most of the time it's a BioVision, it's a TV. And it's, yeah. like, it's so much more than that. Mm. This is partially why I love it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know what um, DJ Neo is saying about making a Bio System 5, but the world has moved on in people's expectations and yeah i think i could sort of see that but then you're cobbling together a screen and speakers whereas this is just one box that does everything you don't even need the tv you, as you say it can be an audio system and then you can you can change the screen around it but it does everything in that one box so yes uh it's partially what I love, and also that it's not mm. so bloody heavy like a Harmony. Yeah. Because uh, I don't know if people know, but I'm moving eventually after all. And the one thing I dread is having to carry the Harmony around. Mm. So I'm most likely in for this. I haven't, I have yet to see a reason why I wouldn't go this way. And yeah. part of that is obviously the moving. If I was going to stay here for, I don't know, 10 years longer, I would have maybe put it on the back burner. But mm. dear God, the power is enticing. Oh, yes. Yeah, Max is asking about the aluminium side parts. Yeah, they're replaceable. You can basically reskin it. If you want to go from fabric to wood a year later, you can do it. Change from um, the aluminium pa uh, panels, I gather, come with it in all three sizes. So you can upscale your TV five years down the line and just swap the panels over. They should be in the box with that color choice. So that's my understanding. Uh, how do we uh, know if it connects to Rune? I don't know, but I'll get the spec sheet up in, yeah, in a second. Yeah, it's not, it's not advertised as a Rune endpoint, but there's nothing to stop you bringing out your Rune audio via another device and feeding it in. Yeah. I mean, they have play two Chromecast. All the specs that are in the existing Mozart speakers are here. Uh, I have the spec sheet up. Hey. Oh, wait. Come on. Oh. Sorry. It, it froze for a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, connecting a streamer to it. You don't need to, it's already got the streamers built in. So uh, whilst it's not directly room capable, AirPlay, Chromecast, Bluetooth. Deezer, DLNA, uh, yeah. Bluetooth 5.1. Yeah, um, I mean, I already use a networked music server onto my Emerges, which is the same streaming platform. There's no need for an external streamer. If you want to do that, use the DAC within the streamer and feed analog audio into the theater. Um, yeah, the, the, that's what I would agree with too. Yeah, I guess in uh, having looked through the specs earlier, the the only to me the only downside I can think of is that it no longer does uh, DTSX. 
Yeah. It's now uh, all the whole Dolby platform or LPCM or PCM. Mm -hmm. But generally, you've got the option of it'd be rare that you, you would need DTSX, isn't it now? Certainly for new some release. movies are, some aren't. Mm. There's normally an alternative option. P a PCM is generally always the option, and uh, that still works fantastically. Yeah. But uh, yeah, at the bottom here, t uh, 12 amplifiers to mm -hmm. 100 watt for the six and a half inch bass drivers. Six and a half inch bass drivers. Dear God. And then uh, there's 10 additional speakers. Uh, what's also interesting is uh, in the sort of live pictures you see, there's that metal circle in the middle. Mm. So that's a fully custom compounded driver they made. Yes. With uh, a five inch uh, center mid-range kind of speaker mm -hmm. with the tweeter in front of that. Yeah, I like that. So that's going to get your center image absolutely bang spot on in the, the middle of under the middle of the screen also uh for a, a tv solution the soundbar does 28 hertz to twenty three thousand hertz yes i mean that's ridiculous that's yeah. literally the same vlab 28s do and the yeah. base capability as shown here 94 db spl that's one db less than 28s do yep i mean and that's down to having the bigger base drivers um, fact, yeah, like Billy said, yeah, that coaxial center driver is just like the KEF uh, drivers. Really, really good idea. Uh, yeah, uh, also very important. Automated speaker setup with external microphone. Yeah. So you get this weird spider looking microphone with it. That with a does... B&O logo. Yay. Not just any, yeah, <laughs> that not makes just it better. any spider bike. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that tunes for room compensation for the, uh, the, the sound bar for the BSM theater, but also for everything attached to it. Yes. So it swoops every channel that's attached to it and makes it perfect for the seating position you put it in. And yeah. like 50s and 90s, you can put it in several positions and it beam forms to whatever position you put it in. So yeah. you don't even have to like be dead on. It'll, it'll work that out for itself. Yeah, I understand what Travis Sylvania is saying about wanting a digital audio input. I'm going to look into that. There's a possibility it may take digital audio in some format through USB, but I'm not expecting that. I'm expecting it to be analog via the converter. But leave that one with me. Let's see what we can what we can sort out. I'll have a word with the guys. Can you do that technically over HDMI? Um, yes, you can do audio embedding in HDMI and then feed it that way. Um, but I, it's often a, a better approach if you can get it in on a dedicated audio input. So, I mean, you can embed or de embed audio on HDMI. Yeah. But you, what you don't want is for there to then be a spec update on HDMI that then yeah, disables that, that input yeah. without a picture. So, uh, in terms of. Uh formats to me these are the two most important ones the dolby true hd which is the uncompressed uh the true hd is the the dolby Atmos of discs that is mm -hmm. totally uncompressed up to 40 uh gigabit which is a crazy amount of data and it has the the spatial audio in it and the dolby digital plus uh 7.1 uh why that is important to me anyway is that you can use the built-in apps on any of the tvs because uh netflix uh, disney plus amazon mm -hmm. etc they all stream on uh, dolby digital plus with atmos yeah so uh mm. that makes the the atmos uh, dolby vision dolby atmos uh logo pop up on the top and uh you get the best because yeah, uh, it's it's crazy the amount of uh, like Netflix 5.1 isn't bad, but you lose about 300 kilobit or so uh, a, a second a minute I forget mm -hmm. of uh, audio data from your stream, which like you you lose about so the full speed uh, uh, Netflix does is about 850 to 900 kilobit a second. 
Yeah. But with 5.1, it's only like 500. So mm. it's a massive increase in sound, uh, not only placement, what speakers it's in, but also uh, d just the pure quality of it. And if you're paying for 4K uh, Netflix, might as well use it. Mm. And this oh, is yeah. why I've been using workarounds and stuff to, <laughs> to get to it. Yeah. Uh, so, Travis yeah, Sylvania, yeah. I'll have to watch this fully later. Off to work. Good luck. Yes. <laughs> Enjoy the daydreaming. Uh, can yeah. you tell me uh, if this automatically upsamples uh, two channel music audio to 7.1? Also, how do I buy this in the USA? Maybe Crutchfield Audio Advice. Thanks, bros. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the kind donation. Uh, it can upsample automatically if you so desire. Again, yeah. this is a setting of preference. Uh, if I play music standardly, all speakers are active. Even if it's two channel, five channel, it doesn't matter. But you can set it to two channel or four, or you can set it to whatever you like. Uh, and this is a part of what we tried to say earlier, where the Bio Vision or the the, the the sort of software part of this is so badly explained. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when I don't know, I put some YouTube music on, right? YouTube is only two channel. Uh, the true image will upscale that to all the speakers, and I have I have nine speakers attached to it, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, they all play at different levels, and the true image sort of sniffs out what belongs where, and it's amazing how true image does that. Again, another thing that's very undervalued in BNO that every BNO person loves, but they don't market all that fantastically. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, you, you can have your whole Atmos uh, experience uh, uh, with music. Uh, even when I set it to one of the settings I have, I, I call it 90s because it's the closest assimilation I can get to 90s with 50s is I have a speaker setting where the 50s play in wide and uh, the 17s on my ceiling there are height surround. And yeah. even with the YouTube video, uh, they, they are active and it sort of heightens the whole speaker. And mm -hmm. instead of where the 50s are here, you would say in stereo sound there, sound there, it sort of moves up and, and a bit wider. Yeah. And that's the closest approximation I can get with 50s to 90s. Sure. Just to quickly answer a few chat questions for Travis Sylvania, um, I suggest only buy on the BNO website if you've got that option at the moment. If you haven't got a BNO dealer, don't search for third parties, get it direct from BNO's website. Or, or email a, a dealer in the country. Yeah, sure. Uh, for Vlad, absolutely better than the Harmony and Eclipse for sound. What absolutely did... blows them out. Oh, of he water. asked how it. Sorry, for people that only listen, I don't know what he asked. <laughs> ah, sorry, he said, is it better than the Harmony? Yes. Yes, definitely. It's about um, double the power. Mm, yeah. Tech and, and uh, sound and, yeah. The Harmony um, has two four-inch uh, bass drivers. This has two six-and-a-half-inch. Yeah. Um, Eric's asking, does it do full-range audio um, compensation? Yes, it does. Um, BLab 5 started the process and just went up to 250 hertz. Um, Mo the Mozart speakers, when they do the audio sweep, it is right up to uh, 10,000 hertz. So you 30 to 10, 000, uh, 30 hertz to 10,000 hertz, yeah. which is basically then, the entire spectrum of audible sound for most people. Yes. Because I think people sometimes think like voices start in the 5,000, like, no, that's violin territory. Yes. I mean, um, uh, yeah. Now, let's see, there's, uh, who was asking about passive speakers, Nitrox? Yes, you could do that with a BO amp or any regular passive uh, sort of amp, uh, power amp, but I, say, I would say don't do it. Don't plan that as part of your setup because the whole benefit of theatre is that it's got the, all the acoustic signatures of every BO lab speaker mapped into it. All the benefits of all this adaptation is for BO labs. So, this is like buying champagne and drinking it out of paper cups. Whilst you might have passive speakers in your ceiling, just forget them for this. Put BO Labs in there, any BO Labs, and the, it will absolutely sing. It's designed for them. So, just, Unless they are the Celestials, they probably will have a preset for those. They may have, but my understanding is it's all the BO Labs and not any of the passives. Um, 
And in fact, Sandeep has asked as well about, um, Jeff mentioned the theatre's calibrated alongside 50s. That's, my understanding is, it's not going to give you the power of 50s, but what no. it does is the 50s are quite unique because they have a really nice neutral magnitude response. Um, they don't have a real sonic signature. They are a... They're flat. They're flat, yeah. They're, <laughs> they're the, probably the flattest of all the beer labs, including the 90s and the 5s. And that's what you've got here. You've got that capability to, of giving a real neutral, true representation of sound for voice. So that's where I think they're coming from with this. They've matched it to the 50s in terms of the way that it reproduces the frequency spectrum. Yeah, voice intelligibility was very important on this. Yeah. I mean, there, there's nothing worse than having all this power and it, and it sort of sounds like that. Exactly. And that, that's what you'd get to some extent if you use 28s. If you basically said, this is a pair of 28s laid on the side, the 28s have got a bit of a bass belly. A bit? Uh, yeah, a bit. <laughs> it has to be dialed down. And uh, yeah, this is, that wouldn't really work for a centre channel. But 50s, 50s are the exact tone signature. Um, in fact, yeah, again, Sandeep was asking about, um, you've got your streamer, I think the Lin streamer, plugged into the 50s. I reckon keep it there. For two channel music, pipe it straight into the 50s. For everything else, run it through the theatre and get it expanded up to surround sound. Yeah, or like what Billy said, uh, people mm. sleep on this. The Ethernet switch, it has an Ethernet yeah. switch inside with that uh, is four good. one gigabit ports. Yeah. I mean, to me, this is fantastic because that means I pull one wire to that and my 50s mm. can live off of it and if I have a different place my 28s can live off of that as well for, for it, Ethernet and it's it's just so much easier because then the Ethernet is local to the B&O system and it'll figure itself out whatever mm. it's fine it yeah. just clears up another path from the route <laughs> yes but yeah for Sandy yeah good plan that's exactly how I'd go for it um. Uh, I was also talking to somebody, and uh, apparently, the room correction and the sweeping of the Biosound Theatre is so good that you technically don't have to tune your 50s or 90s beforehand. That's right. It's better than the the, the tech in the 50s and 90s now. If you, I don't know if you, if anybody's feeling really geeky. Um, if you do a bit of searching for the white papers that Bang & Olufsen staff have published to Danish universities, there's a wonderful one, it's in the public domain, there's a wonderful one that several of the guys have contributed to about mapping a room in 3D from the sonic signature by microphones in different places on the speaker. And when you start to look at the way that they, they're actually mapping rooms in 3D just from the, that acoustic testing. It's really moved on since the 90s came out. I, I got a reminder from Twitch uh, from Captain Jarrett says, tell the Americans not to mount it above the fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they do, they'll have to put it upside down because otherwise the height speakers are going to be straight into the ceiling. So they'll have to become <laughs> depth speakers. So, yes. But uh, yeah, the, the spec sheet here is, by the way, from, straight from B&O, 8, 8x power link. Yeah. And eight times a yeah. uh, wireless power link. And in the uh, press release somewhere, they said uh, you can attach 16 speakers and another eight wirelessly. Mm. So, oh, yes. uh, I need to get more speakers, apparently, is what I take from this. This is subliminal messaging to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, Peter it's, asking, it's good, will though. It, it still has than... a puck controller in it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Peter Lawson's asking, will it sound better than my 18s? Absolutely. Um, your 18s are nice speakers, but this is going, this blows them out of the water. This is sailing boat versus battleship. Um, the best thing is, don't throw your 18s away. Plug them into the theatre, and they will sound better on the theatre than they do on their own. Yeah, that's the, the big benefit of this. Also, it, I think he said earlier he has 18s and a 19. Yeah. At this point, I would say. Uh, put your 18s rear speakers, have mm -hmm. yourself a surround system, let the front do the front, yeah. and put your subwoofer somewhere else, uh, maybe behind or wherever it fits best in the room. Yes. I would still do a bit of manual tuning in that, but otherwise mm. the, the theater can do that. Yeah. 
but though the 18s and 19s will work so much better on the theater than they do without it because it knows those speakers better than they know their own performance the sub is needed um the 19 will go down to what 23 hertz with a decent amount of power so it will take and the, the theater will manage that bass so it will take share bass down to the ability of the theater at 30 hertz it'll give the 18s the high bass but then 23 24 to 30 hertz it can give a good bit of that to the 19. yeah uh, hold on willie is trying to join i'll see if <laughs> i can add him uh, to hey what, what what buttons do we do now oh there it changed it around again is he uh, on the road again i have i have no idea <laughs> Uh, I'll add Willy and then we always get weird Skype things going on. Uh, we're still here. Yes. Yo. Evening. Hello. Oh, let's do where's the camera button. <laughs> hey. Oh, well, he's on the road. Oh, <laughs> he's going to be falling quite a bit because uh, I'm stuck in traffic going up and down, stop and go. So, anyway, I went to visit the new shop. Sweet. For me, pretty cool. Very nice. Good cable management, I gotta give him that. <laughs> but uh, I'm starting there tomorrow and tearing this things up and getting some new shit going on. So, yeah, I just got an email about the Biosound Theater just now, literally. Yes. And about five hours ago, there was a thing on YouTube about it. The video that they put out for 30 seconds. No, yeah, you don't want to watch that. You want to watch the full video, the 10 minute one that explains it all. Oh, that one, freaking, that's the movie of the year, my friend. That's what that. <laughs> <laughs> and Oscar goes to. <laughs> so uh, uh, you were eyeing a harmony. Are you still or are you now thinking? Ooh, oh, not after I read the specs and uh, and uh, whatnot and things and such and whatever, uh, no, <laughs> forget about it. And even though, you know, cool movement, but if there's a if there's a movement in the stand, then you know, awesome. Yes. Yeah. I like. Uh, I just see where the like the, the apparently there's a touch scan touch screen on it, right? Yeah, on top, like a, a giant version of the level. Hmm. Yeah, I've not seen that. Yeah, but yeah, the touch screen. Not that cheap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> again, uh, done by Noto uh, Design. Uh, fant yeah. There we go. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Because they did the 50s, they did the 28s, they did the 90s. Now they do this. Just hire them permanently already. They do good work. <laughs> yes. I think um, so. Yeah. I think they should. I definitely prefer their work to layer design. I don't think they've really got their head round what Bang & Olufsen is going forward. Yeah. I think Noto has, it, Noto has it on the button. Yes, absolutely. Definitely do. I think they're better off or better now than uh, uh, Christian, uh, what, Kristen Krab or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think they got, they got you know, even the shape. Like, that's cool. Yeah. They got a lot of stuff that is really, I think, way ahead of its time at this point still. Yeah. But I think as well, Torsten Valer, it's, it's a little while since he's done anything for them, but he's really got his head around what BNO should look and feel like. Level. I honestly think that mm. he almost. But that's a little while like, ago now. I think he's checked out. I think he's more or less busy with LG and that's better money for him. And, and you know, money talks and, and, and you know, bollocks walks. So mm. I think, you know. If, if it comes to the wallet part of it, then why not? Like, you know, would you care for, like, obviously it's a, it's a trick question, because like, would you care if you had more money somewhere else and you're not really like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, yeah. everybody, everybody has their price. Yeah. Look, just looking in the chat, Peter Larson's asking about putting level or balance as a rear surround. A few people have said at BNO are saying that they, that's their aim. That's what they want with this, but it, it isn't there yet. So don't buy it on the basis of putting balances as rears. Wait until, you know, we've confirmed it is actually working. They steam iron, steam iron the freaking bugs out of it too. Mm. I mean, it's, it's Mozart-based, so there won't be any bugs 
or shouldn't be any bugs in terms of yeah but this is a different device. way of doing it again uh yeah. To me, I don't think it's even that the Mozart bugs. I think the biggest problem is that they're playing with the fire of... Uh, what kind of a network do you have, sir? Because if you have something that is just basic uh, ISP deal, right, that you get that little router thing, there's no way you're going to have proper performance on it. But then again, like if you buy in Bang & Olufsen and you have a theater system, then I would assume that whoever is specking it for you, the first thing they would ask you is, what's your network like? Yeah, I actually asked that question to Christian Tier back in June, and he's, he answered straight away, and he said, you don't buy a Formula One car and run it on second-hand tyres. <laughs> no, if you, you want to, If you want to do B&O products, then part of that is getting your networking in place. You're getting yes. the throughput to make everything work properly. And he says, that we've, we've, we've got to make the assumption that that's the approach, and that's the approach the store should give out, because if... If you try and compromise your product for a customer who's shortchanging their network, you'll get nowhere. So you just as, we've, we've got to just basically tell customers that they, if they're buying the absolute best that's on the market, just put the infrastructure in to make it work. That's right. Yeah, I refuse to work on people's networks like when they, not refuse, but I refuse to not put in a proper network if they're doing a, and, oh, well, no, I had this stuff from the old apartment, I'm like, or old house, and I look, it's like seven, eight-year-old antiquated D-Link crap, right? I'm like, bro, like, this is good for paperweights now at this point. Yeah. So just look in the chat again, if you don't mind, Kenneth Peterson saying, will the included mic be the settings for the range to the speaker and loudness? Yes, absolutely. The tech has moved on a lot from what it was, even with the, the Harmony and the Eclipse. This is doing uh, a full sonar room scan, effectively. 30 hertz up to 10,000 hertz to measure the room. And then it's also taking 30 to, I think, about 250 hertz in terms of room resonance. So it's managing loudness, it's managing bass capability, it's listening and it's acoustically mapping the room from that is the speaker position. That Jesus Christ. I have a feeling it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, I'll just do this. I'll hold it. What's it called? Uh, I forget that, uh, that software that's built into most of the Denon, uh, amps and stuff. They're, oh, Odyssey. And, and there's okay. a, a, some one with the bit starts with an R at the two, I think. Uh, Anyway, it doesn't matter, but I think one of them is open source and they built it off mm. of that because it is really, really good. Yes. And you can correct for just about anything in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're looking in the chat. Uh, Max was asking about the smallest panel it works with. The smallest one you can mount it up with and have it the size match is 55 inch, but you can use any panel with this. You don't have to actually physically mount the TV and the, the theater together. I've seen examples in Denmark of the, um, the, the, the theatre being mounted separately on the wall from the TV. So then you can just choose any TV panel. Yeah, but to get it on screen is a 55 inch, by the way. Yeah. And it's uh, perfectly equidistant to the panel itself. Yeah. It, it's in gold, so think of that mm. what you will. Also, it's on, a, it's on a table stand, and I think the table stand comes with it, actually. Ah, right. I do like that. Yeah, so and Eric's asking, saying about the room mapping effect, that MOS speaker mapping. Yes, it does. It should help place the speakers within the 3D map of the room. And then because um, Atmos is based on the, the speaker positions and it maps the sound accordingly, this actually should give true Atmos sound by understanding where the speakers are in 3D space. That is insane what this thing's going to be able to do. Like, it's just going to be insane. I'm looking forward to it so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've got the picture on screen of the two, uh, the speaker and the TV separate. So basically, that can be any TV. It can be a projector. That's the thing that hasn't been That's mentioned. what I'm looking forward to, that you can finally now utilize projectors again with BNO yes. properly versus jumping hoops and maybe doing an HDMI, HDMI and, yeah. splitter. Yeah, and it's just always some kind of shit that always... Stops working on Friday night. Yeah. There's like one that, problem that I can see though using the projector. One one thing I, I can you imagine if you've got the picture that's up on screen on the, the left at the moment with the it almost looks like a sailboat hull 
under the TV. If you yeah, took yeah. that TV away and had a projection screen there, and you've got guests coming in for a party, I could just see someone dropping a wine glass onto that central panel as a, and thinking it's a little occasional table. Kick them out and get better friends. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, people I have again, put. Like uh, it should come with a domed glass cover. I've seen people like at parties put like a happen. beer bottle on a fifty or something like that. Oh. I hope that wasn't on your fifty. Oh, no. Fuck, there's an accident. I would kick those people out immediately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, you don't know what you're doing, goodbye. Go away. <laughs> oh, dude, he just fucking plowed three cars, man. Fucking hell. Uh, do you need to pay attention? <laughs> I'm not. Well, I am paying attention. He's, like, I don't know what they did, but that just totally didn't help the rush hour traffic at all, dude. <laughs> Uh, coming to oh, price, like uh, we're going five kilometers an hour. How do you get in the accident at five kilometers an hour? Uh, you're being on your phone. Staring in your lap. You're obviously staring into your lap. Like that's just what it is. Mm. Yeah. Uh, speaking of pricing, it it'll be sold and staged as you see on the screen, which is the soundbar experience, as they would call it. But then also they sell it as uh, what they would call the TV experience, which is on the floor stand. Yeah. So. Uh, oh, 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 okay, I see. So uh, let me see. Where do I have it? Pricing. This is in euros. Uh, so. Uh, so the soundbar in 55 inch is uh, 6,290 for uh, 65 inch is 6,790 and 77 inch is 7,290 euro. This is excluding wood. Wood is a grand, a thousand euro, regardless of size, because that doesn't change. Then you have the, the VESA mount interface on the back. Uh, which is really, really flexible because that basically works with any thickness uh, and 55 to 77 inch uh, variety. And uh, you can sort of adjust the depth that within reason, like if the next G series is like four inches thick, then probably not. But uh, so it, from the thinnest TV to the what currently is the thickest TV, that'll all work. And then uh, you have the floor brack or the floor stand, like this. It's uh, it's electric and tilting, like the spec sheet earlier showed. Oh, uh, where our faces are in the way. Crap. So this is the TV experience as shown, uh, yeah. and the floor stand is two thousand eight hundred euro. And then you add the panel cost, uh, whatever that may be, depending on size. So. Uh, Currently, as it stands right here in the Netherlands, a 77 inch with oak and a floor stand uh, is 17,600 euro as a TV experience. Uh, okay. Which is expensive, but cheaper than a Harmony. How much is a Harmony? A Harmony is 20,000 euro 500. I would go for this over that. I'm sorry now, like Harmony, like this thing just out cools Harmony by every single beat, man. I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, I, I personally still really like the design of the Harmony because it's so tiny when it's off. Yes. Uh, and if I were to go for this, if I were to consider a floor stand, it's only temporarily for in this place because in the US, I would have it on the wall separated. Because also cable routing is so easy in the US with paper walls and whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting question in the chat about does it have matrix support to do projection and TV at the same time? I don't think so directly, but there's nothing to stop you taking the HDMI arc out to a matrix and working the, the software there so that you've got the split between different outputs. But whether it's integrated or not, I don't think they're necessarily planning for that. I think I'd expect it to be one or I don't the think they've planned for it yet, but I think it is, I, or, or, or done anything about it. But there is there is definitely a need for it, because there's going to be a time where there's 
installations will require it. Yeah, and this is the like, first like, product that made it possible because you couldn't really do that viably with a Harmony or Eclipse or certainly not no. with a stage. But Sandeep, I'd say it's not a case of no matrix, it's just we don't know for certain what the process would be yet. I think, that, as Willie says, I think they will cover it. They'll have to, like, like there was, uh, what is it, the, the Harmony has a matrix support, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. So I think that would natively be there, but then again, this is running on a Mozart platform, which is brand new to the to the entire platform. Like, this is the first product, right, that, that is introduced in a, or a, a the first AV video. product, I guess you can call it, yeah. Because it's not just music now, like, it's got everything. Yeah. Uh, Dan Sarah 37000 asks, what's the price again for the bar alone in 55 inch and 77? 55 inch, excluding oak, 55 inches, 6,290 euro here, and the 77 is 7,290 euro. If you want oak with that, it's a grand, and the grand is the same because the oak actually doesn't change size. It's just the, the, the wings on the side. Also, uh, if you are wall mounting, it depends on whether you want those wings to match or if you are okay with it, as is 55 inch. Uh, and if that whatever thousand odd euro is a, a deal breaker, then don't have it and wait for it until you have it. <coughs> and it'll, obviously it it'll be in gold, it'll be in silver, uh, uh, anthracite and with uh, dark oak. Which is uh, be cool. gonna be sweet, and uh, there's uh, uh, a gold tone like seen on screen with uh, light oak. The light oak is actually quite a nice color. Doesn't match anything I own. Sure, but, but for the people that have, or if you have gold twenty eight or anything of the sort, it, it, it matches everything yeah. current. Even the fifties come now with light oak if desired. Yes. That's the thing now, it's getting a bit more standardised, isn't it? We're getting the same colours coming through on every new product. Um, I think for Sandeep, I'd say don't don't panic on this one. I think we'll see Matrix support, but it's a case of having a chat with your dealer or installer and just working out which Matrix you're going to use and how you're going to integrate it. Well, most likely it's going to be Athlona because that's the only one they're really in bed with, right? Like, yeah. I don't see I don't see why not that they would not they would discontinue you know, that, that path with, with, with the right? Roboting, but we're what you're saying. Yeah. The end of the day, like, there are homes still. Yes, it's probably less and less now. It's, it's less, less and less now, right? Because you have, have just TVs are unless you're in a restaurant. That's uh, all fucked up. Yeah, your, your connection <laughs> is not terribly great there. Yeah, I think I've got to just put in there for Bio Meal saying there'll, there'll be room for improvements with the software. No, I think actually we're, we're looking at the software platform is the same that we've seen on the Balance and the Level and Emerge and the 28s. Most of those issues have been ironed out. Yes, we've got a little, more, little bit more coming in terms of the surround sound capabilities, but I don't expect we're going to see any major issues. I mean, obviously, I'm not the software man, but... I don't think so either, uh, because the last six months have been basically nothing but software. Yeah. Uh, fixing, making, testing, yeah. because uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the initial idea was that it was supposed to be launched in May. That's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, since the whole supply chain uh, thing uh, it came around, they just decided, well, we it, it can either be a paper launch and everybody gets disappointed and then you get 100 orders and you can maybe fulfill 20 and that'll make people even more upset. Or we just wait mm -hmm. and uh, do all the software, make everything perfect. And uh, th that's sort of what they chose for, which is a good thing. Mm. Because I'd rather them Finally. hold off and make it good than sort of. We'll see. <laughs> a, a, a beta, a beta project that now you're a freaking beta tester for it. Yeah, but this is too important to be a beta project. This is, I think, this yeah. is going to be the core of BNO's TV and cinemas 
road range I going agree. forward. And this is how they'll style the rest of their products. When eventually Harmony becomes end of life and Contour, this is this is how they're going to approach it. We'll see variations of theatre rather than a full B and O T V. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, Dan Star three thousand saying, "Can you buy a, the the bar now?" Yes, yeah, that's the whole thing. It's modular. You can just buy the bar. Uh, you can change the. Oh, the you can buy everything separate. Fabric. You do not have to yeah. go in for a package deal. I already asked that. Yeah. Because uh, I, I'm facing a similar issue. Like I could, I enjoy the TV experience for here, but I don't want to buy a new panel that's literally that I can't use in the US in like literally five six months from now that wow. that's literally mm-hmm. money down the drain so i asked what if i want to keep the panel from my harmony and mm. yeah that works and it's a c9 yeah. panel and th- that's fine yep and yes the streamer is replaceable as in the level uh, i understand they're looking at cradle to cradle certification on it yes so this i don't think it's officially awarded yet but i know it's something they've had in mind the streamer is up- upgradable and yeah the whole thing can the be audio decoder on. is upgradable, so if there's a yeah. Atmos Plus at some point, you can uh, literally remove the chip and put a new one in. Yeah, they attach like M.2 SSDs, really, uh, where you sort of you clip it in and just screw it down. It's actually a, you could technically do a DIY if you know how to get into there. Yeah, uh, but I suspect that question. getting to the chip is actually the <laughs> hardest part. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, on the level, it's dead easy. Um, in fact, I did a video and I changed the battery and access the chips in the park. Um, but this will be a bit more involved. Yeah. The spec sheet, um, I don't have a link for it. Yes, I'm not sure if I it is by now, but give it a day and it should be. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, you could potentially put a Samsung panel or whatever on this, but then you won't have BO Remote 1 integration. So uh, that is a, th- a thing. Yeah. They I are... would suggest to buy it with the real remote one anyways. Like, why not? Like, I find the app is a little more cumbersome to get into than picking up a real remote one and just turning the thing down or skipping a track or whatever. Yeah. Newton it. Oh, the spec sheet is up on the website. Yeah, you can, and you can just download it. It's under uh, tech specs, and then usually it's very down at the bottom. It says... Uh, something like product release and tech specs, right? And there's two downloadable links and you can get a PDF. Uh, the, yes, Halo the Halo will work with this one, yes. Yep. So uh, th- that's also sweet. Uh, I mean, why wouldn't it? The Halo works with everything Mozart already. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I mean, even the CEO uh, talked about uh, the, the modularity of the internals uh, of the electrics. Uh, and that they're really looking at uh, supporting this for 10 to 15 years. Yeah. Which is uh, sweet. Yeah. And this is why it's a BO sound with the speaker, not a BO system. Because you look at BO system three and four, and the limitation isn't the audio there, it's video. It's the fact they're trying to become a a video processor and it's capped at 1080p. And that's why people are, are binning them now. So if they'd made Beer System 4 a sound center and an audio processor, people would still be using them. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, if the, if the System 4 wasn't 1080p, that's the only drawback downside on it, right? Which no. I don't understand, because, well, I guess it came out before the BV4, but they should have made Mark II and just put the board in it, for the love of God. It, would be the, it wouldn't have been that difficult. Yeah, but by taking away the video processing here, you immediately take away the problem at source. That's right. You're just just dealing with audio. So now it's oh, it's actually somewhat future proof. Future proof in that uh, the eARC pass through is eight K sixty. Right, that's good. And four uh, K one twenty wow. as well. Me, uh, so it's like I, 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 I when was this Monday with Sandy was talking about like who cares about eight K? Apparently, B and O cares about eight K sixty already. Yeah. and that's <laughs> and that's right because. There will be situations where we will be caring about it in a few years, for getting the football nice and clear or whatever on our 150-inch screens in 10 years' time. And that's the point where this will still be in use. So when when the tech moves on to that, 
then this will be ready. Which is cool. Yeah, that thing is insane, man. I am looking forward to it very much. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, is it early? Like, last week, September, early October, is uh, you can go to your dealer and uh, look at it. And yeah. availability <laughs> to actually receive it is late October, early November. That's right. Uh, if they can push it out faster, they probably will. But th these are the sort of guided time frames you're looking at. Yeah, first of October, UK dealers should be seeing it. Um, but yeah, it'll vary a bit country by country. Yeah, I mean, I could very well see our dealers here having it about a week earlier because your mail, yeah. whatever delivery system they use, is a bit weird. Yeah. Uh, Max says it's about 200 euro cheaper in the UK than in Europe. It could yeah. very well be exchange rates because <laughs> they've all plummeted recently. Yeah, because it's down to the D Danish kroner exchange rate rather than euro. So, yeah, UK to kroner compared to euro to kroner. Yeah. Also, the Harmony 83 inch in Sweden was like a grand cheaper than it was here in Euro. Yeah. <laughs> so exchange rates, uh, I, I bet you if you're in the US, you're still uh, on the, the not so great side. But no. but, but it's, bit of it's closer than it's ever been before. Yeah. So why not consider a holiday in a country where the exchange rate's preferable? Go to the B&O store while you're there, buy your theatre and your TV panel, Get it shipped over. Pack light. You get a holiday and you save money. You heard it here first. Yeah. Right. But in, yeah, I really, I've spoken to some people and even the people at BNO are amazed at what they did. Yeah. Which is not something I've heard often before. No. The only no. time I've heard that before was 50s and 90s. Yeah. Yes. And that well, they go, yeah. we made something, and it's oh. like it's like, yeah. wait, what? Right. You're, you're, you work with this, and you go, oh. <laughs> it's like, yeah. right. <laughs> BSN nine thousand was the other one. That was the one where, yeah, the because obviously you just you just have to keep going back and looking at it again, and just watching it move, and watch, and yeah, this is in that sort of um, range. It's yeah, it's going to be a. A proper icon product. Oh, mm -hmm. I, love, I love this. I, I so badly want to hear it in real life. Mm. Especially how the, the, the whole Atmos thing works by itself. Uh, and this is one of the few times where I actually think, yeah, you don't really need front speakers with this unless you have 50s. I mean, I, I would have never thought there Pretty was much. A, a, a day where B&O in their sort of press release said, if you have 28s, they're kind of lost on the front. Just put them rear. Yeah. Because this, try... this is the opportunity to upsell everything you have. And they sort of oh, go, okay. no, it, it's fine. You don't have to go yeah. nuts. This is nuts enough. <laughs> yeah. Can I just check something? Noah is saying um, we'll need to try something in Danish. So, is it Jegelska B and O or Jegelska B and O? Probably Jeg. Jeg. Jegelska <laughs> B and O. <laughs> How are we doing there? Is that? Uh, yeah, probably close enough. Uh, let's see. Uh, Eric says uh, $6,900 US at entry level. Yeah. Oh, the, it's, it's within give or take 500, though the dollar is now stronger than the euro mm. so make of that which what you will <laughs> but it, yeah i mean this is a good time for bno in north america finally like yes. if anything would sell well it's this in the us yes uh how much are the stands the electric wall bracket the electric wall bracket is uh, uh like a strip underneath of nice the similar aluminium and then it falls out electrically to 60 degrees 2800 euro the same for the floor stand the electric one uh the the table stand which will hold and the theater and your panel is i think included uh and so free well free you pay for it somewhere probably 
Uh, and then you have a static wall bracket for the whole thing as a whole. And I don't remember what that is, but it's, I think it's three or 400 euro. But I, I, I don't remember. Uh, but the, 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 so the electric wall bracket is 2,800 and the floor stand is the same price. Euro. So in dollars it will be. What do you think SDB will do for it? I don't think they'll need to do anything. It's, it's covered. Mm -hmm. uh, I think SDB will do two things. Uh, potentially make a, a static tall stand for the floor and or uh, a, a, a mounting way to get it to work with a, an older set of stands, like from a 755 or something. Oh yeah, like the BB, BB12 and stuff, yeah. Yeah, so you oh, can manually nice. still rotate it, but it takes the sting out of the, the floor stand a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, v Low asks, is it 83-inch OLED compatible? It uh, depends on how you have it. If you have them separated yeah. on the wall, absolutely. If you want to attach them like like on top of one another, uh, then I'm not entirely sure. I think so, but I don't think the wings come to 83 inches. It's down uh, to how the brackets work on the back as well, I suppose. Yeah, and the, the, it depends a bit on how much play there is. Like, currently, mm. they're not showing it for a reason. But in terms of... Uh, functionality if you have your hdmi and your ethernet cable running between the two if if you're okay with it separated like they actually show it uh like on the wall uh like here in this picture then yeah there, there's nothing stopping it from working uh the lg 97 inch works with this because the the basis for it not working is the what do they call it again it's the it's the nine, uh, Alpha 7 or Alpha 9 chip that needs to be inside the panel and it needs to be over software version 4.5, I think, now. Which is a good thing because most uh, projectors from LG are actually over those same specs. Mm -hmm. So that your uh, b &O remote would work with that too, or it should because those are the limitations. This is the same reason why the, the B series and A series panels of LG don't work, because they have Alpha 6 and Alpha 5 chips in them. Yeah, I think Peter's possibly just joined us. He's asking about connecting Lab 18. Yes, I'll suggest when we've finished um, streaming, go back and have a listen at the start, because we've gone into it in a lot of detail, but basically you can connect 18s, you can connect any beer labs, and they sound better on the theatre than they do normally. So, absolutely, yes. Yeah, it's this is going to be crazy good for B&O, I think. Especially because of this possibility of having them separated and it looking this good. Yes. My and, only and... worry is that they keep up with the inventory, or stock rather, demand. Because this is going to start flying off the shelves once this is realized by not common public but by people that what it does i don't think you'll be able to keep this in stock which is a good problem to have for a dealer yeah um okay, we've got a question in the chat this is one we've gone through in, in a bit of detail earlier but basically yes they'll work with it as multi-room they don't currently work with it as sur rear surround but people i've spoken to at bno have said that is in their game plan so don't buy it on the basis of putting the balance as rear speakers, but when when they announce that, which should happen before The game long. plan is potential on uh, barring legalities of sharing audio that way, network, etc., etc., etc. We talked about this a bit earlier, but uh, everybody hopes, including BNO, that they can pull this off. Uh, but there's no confirmation yet because it, maybe. It's yeah. just, uh, I'll try and sniff out if there's if they're working on a beta somewhere, but it could very much be that they're on an alpha somewhere and nowhere near beta <laughs> testing any of this. Yeah. yeah, Sandeep's asking about the calibration mic. Yes, it calibrates everything. Um, they've got the mapping of every single model of BL Labs going back to 1986 in there, so they know the capability of the speaker. 
the microphone runs every channel individually, connected or wiser, um, and then it runs the setup tones and measures them on the mic from that channel in turn. So yes, it measures at every speaker and calibrates accordingly. Um, and it room corrects for every speaker too. Absolutely, yeah. From With 10, all the other speakers. <laughs> yeah, right down to 30 hertz. Um, and then in terms of um, bass resonance, I think it's about 30 hertz up to about 250, 300 hertz. Um, yeah. I can pull the doc document up. It's... But this, this goes way beyond the, the tech that's already on the Harmony or anything like that. It's a complete new, new evolution of that. Way, way more detailed and better. Room resonance compensation from 30 to 200 hertz. Uh, speaker position compensation from 30 to 10,000 hertz. Yes. So it's aware of the speaker's position within the 3D audible map of the room that it creates in the software. I'm not surprised that they're finally able to do that based off how much tech they have in that goofy cube and, you know, like measuring all these speakers, man. Like, at some point, that technology would just have to leave the lab, right? Like, and, and this is a good vessel to, to leave it on, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, yeah, to recount for everybody, if you ask uh, superior to harmony or level playing field, it depends on what you want. If you're using it as a purely center speaker, both will act a bit differently, but the theater will probably still win because the six and a half inch drivers uh, for bass are active, which is crazy to say for center. Yes. Uh, but be if you put massive speakers next to it, generally a lot of the, uh, like on the Harmony, only the, the two widest speakers stop, right? And with the theater, it's unknown yet how much of the side business stops because yeah. the theater is technically left center right mm. uh, you can play with that customize it to your yeah. heart's extent uh, but uh yeah the harmony is total 450 watt this is 800 watt which is yeah crazy. Wow. up firing yes. wide sideways firing mm -hmm. speed uh, drivers there's beam yeah. forming so uh, you can literally have that beam forming in your 50s go from I'm off center and your center channel goes, oh, you're there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Max is saying b &L will have to try hard to keep up with future beer visions. I don't think we'll see any future beer visions. This is a massive change of direction and a good one. b &L is a really small company in comparison to LG, Samsung and the likes. So sticking to what they're good at, which is the audio processing is absolutely the right thing. I think that we'll see more of this type of approach. Um, I think, yeah, Sandeep's quite right. I think they'll discontinue the Eclipse. That's just my view. I think with, it won't last the end of the year, to be honest. Um, I think we'll no, see there's too many, too many right, really. changes for the, for them to keep up with the sound center. Oh, <laughs> Good now? Yeah, it's still sort of robot -y, but it's all right. It's too much changes to keep up with the sound center. Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, although the Mark III sort of fixes most of that, you would think, because that cutout is big enough. I doubt LG is going to make bigger TVs all of a sudden, as in, like, thicker and or more bezel. Uh, Lawrence asks, do you think we can trade in a Harmony no. 77 for a theater? As in like for like, I don't know, but you could probably change, know, trade okay. in a don't harmony or a harmony, I should say. <laughs> oh, uh, just ask your dealer. Uh, also, mm. I think I've reiterated this once before, but it's not just Dolby Atmos, Dolby True HD, etc. True Image works <laughs> in conjunction with all of it, which is yeah, which I is think superb. You Yes. God, you're so oh. robot -y. I don't know. You seem, <laughs> seem like you're under a bridge or something. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's um, the true image working in tandem with everything. It'll be seamless in that you can go from your TV uh, use to your uh, Dolby True HD and the drop off no, no, in not. terms of sound surround effects is minimal 
Yeah. And uh, I kind of like that you just let True Image do its thing and Dolby come in whenever Dolby is needed. Because however good P PCM is, uh, the Dolby uh, sort of sound signature is so uh, dynamic, you kind of lose that in PCM a bit. And I like, I mean, although some of the Dolby formats are lossy, it's sort of like, who cares if you're watching a movie? If you're captivated, you don't, like, the difference between hearing that needle drop perfectly or hearing a needle drop is, like, it, it's not really that important. It's, it's much more important that if somebody talks to your right, that they're on your right, than that they're exactly three and a half meters on your right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, True Image does what exactly? True Image is uh, B&O's upscaler like Dolby Atmos is. Because Dolby yeah. Atmos is still 7.1. But the Atmos part is the 3D sound uh, or the sound projection in 3D space. So, I mean, uh, Henrik is probably the better guy to explain this because he works with this professionally. But... Uh, True Image works in a similar way where it looks at the sound signal and tries to identify where stuff is supposed to belong in the speakers you have. Now, if you have two speakers, that's uneventful, obviously. But if you have a bunch of speakers like I do, for some reason, uh, like I keep on going back to this uh, example, but there's two ads here that have doorbells in them. For whatever reason, True Image always says, oh, it needs to be in that uh, top BLAB 17. Because somehow a doorbell is high up in your house, right? It's never, like, low. And it freaks me out because it's the exact same doorbell we have here. <laughs> but True Image somehow knows that. Also, with Yeah, uh, that's why it sends it to the exact place where your doorbell is for realism. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might just be the luck part. But if you watch... Uh, uh, on YouTube, YouTube is two channel. If you watch a movie preview on YouTube, uh, there is still sound coming and thunder and stuff coming from behind because that's surround. Although it's only two channel, but True Image looks at that and thinks, hmm, I think this should go here. Yeah. Uh, yeah Kenneth asks, can you use a 77 inch TV with the 55 inch soundbar? It just looks so. What? Yeah, but yeah. I'm not sure what Some... you mean, but you can use whatever size uh, you want with the bigger panel. Yeah, it's worth explaining. It is just one size of soundbar, so it's it has just metal fittings that make it fit in with the size of a TV. The sound, the theatre is one size. It's fit about 55 inches long. So. And it, it still fits, and it still you can still carry it. <laughs> It'll just look. I don't know. If, if it's out of place to you, it's out of place. But if you don't mind, then yeah. why not? Like, currently, uh, I have a 55-inch C9 in the bedroom with uh, the beer sound stage. That also supposedly is offset. But I don't mind that at all. And the gap is only that much between them. Uh, like Bio Miller says, True Image is up and down mixing the incoming sound signal according to your specific loudspeaker setup. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's an up, up mixer generally. I mean, you don't often down mix. I mean, there's very few people that down mix. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, I think we're about there. If anybody has any yeah. questions, I'll be in uh, in in uh, the chat down below for a bit. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't yet already. Uh, like and subscribe to Steve's channel. You're uh, you at much. it in the in in the. Uh, what you call it in the title? That's it. <laughs> yeah. uh, come join our Discord if you want any more info and chatting and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, the Discord, uh, you would have been up on this a bit before everybody else. Uh, we thank you all for watching. Thank you for the super chats, uh, both uh, Travis Sylvania. I always want to say Transylvania and Isaac. Thank you <laughs> both very much. Uh, uh, yeah, last question, uh, Velo, is it HDMI 2.1? Yes, because otherwise it couldn't do 8K60. 
Yep. So uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a good one. I'll roll the outro and uh, we'll see you Sunday. Bye, everybody. Thank oh you, Steve. God. Thank you. Bye. Bye.